Howdy, my name is Matthew, and I will be doing my assignment on the Rayman. So who's the Rayman? The Rayman is this individual named Raymond Babbitt, and he is the sole inheritor of his late father's $3 million. He has a set of routines he likes to do every day, and he doesn't have much sense of social cues and no concept of money. However, he does have a very good memory, and he keeps a journal on him with everything that happens around him. He's also very easily irritated by loud noises and uncomfortable situations. So what is Raymond's routine? So we know very quickly that every single time he goes to a new place, he would always recite the Who's on First skit by Abbott and Costello, which is like a ritual of his. Another thing is he would always know what to eat and when to eat it, especially since uh, most of his life was spent at a mental institution of Walbrook, and he was very uncomfortable when such regiment was not followed. Another very fun fact is that he always knew when his favorite programs such as Jeopardy or Wheel of Fortunes were on, because both of these programs were one of his favorite, or both of them were his favorite channels. And lastly, his bedtimes were always at 11, and he made clear to his brother Charlie whenever it's approaching 11, and oftentimes they had to stop, and basically nothing very productive was done after 11 because of that. So what is this disorder that we're talking about? So we're talking about individuals uh, that are diagnosed with being a savant, or in other words, their fall on ASD or autism spectrum disorder. Individuals with autism, on the autism spectrum disorder have very low perception of social cues. However, being a savant, he's very high functioning in particular areas, but lacking in other social aspects. They have a very oriented schedule that they like to follow, and they dislike new stimuli. So, diagnosis in the context of the film. A particular scene is the hospital scene, in which they didn't really get much help from it. The nurse couldn't see what was wrong with Raymond at all, as, uh, even when his brother Charlie kept trying to tell the nurse that something was wrong with him. Another scene was the psychiatrist scene. At this time and age, it was around the 1980s and 1990s, and not a lot about the ASD was known. The psychiatrist had to go off of something that he had read a while ago, and in order to diagnose Raymond with this condition, he had to simply ask him complex math questions such as what was 312 times 112, which is not very helpful at all. Diagnosis of autism in other cultures can be very different as well. Although more light has been shown on autism, especially in the modern era, a lot of less fortunate countries still don't deem autism as an actual medical condition, and oftentimes treatment is very expensive for parents. And if their child is not diagnosed with autism, a lot of times they don't they aren't able to receive the funding for these said treatments. So there's a lot of stigmas that surround autism. A lot of individuals think they're very non-functioning, and a lot of them are overreact to everything, are very lazy, and they don't really end up with anywhere in life. However, we know this is very not true at all, because especially in a modern age, we had know a lot of companies that hired individuals with autism or Down syndrome or any type of mental disability, despite a lot of people believing all these things. So let's focus more on what is uh, being a savant. So in this particular situation, we know that um, Raymond ba Abbott is very good at numbers. Uh, when a box of toothpicks were dropped in the movie, he was able to count how many were dropped and how many were still in the box. And because of this, Charlie obviously brought him to Vegas to count cards, which is not very good use of his abilities. Um, so another thing is he's very easily irritable. So, uh, a scene in which um, they were trying to board a plane, Raymond was ref very refusing and very uh, disagreeing on whether or not to board the plane because he knew all such airlines have crashed before. Um, when he was getting forced onto the plane, Raymond responded very abruptly and tried to self-inflict harm on himself in which they stopped boarding the plane. So a lot of these symptoms can be very misconstrued. So obviously uh, being a savant, he was very good at one thing. However, a lot of individuals with ASD aren't fortunate enough for this and a lot of times they don't have this special skill or special power. Um, Raymond, although in a movie was very submissive, a lot of individuals with ASD can also be very, very aggressive when uh, responding with a foreign stimuli. So for treatment plans for autism, a lot of times uh, the, uh, OT and PT are very recommended. Individuals with autism don't know better in social situations, and a lot of times they have to be taught to imitate certain actions that are deemed socially acceptable. However, ethical concerns are that a lot of these individuals don't know why they're doing these, and a lot of times treatments are very long and arduous. Another thing is that autism, people with autism are known to be abused and taken advantage of because of their lack of ability, inability to talk back. So a lot of times it's very difficult to gauge how effective these uh, treatments are because these individuals are, individuals are unable to tell us how effective it is. Lastly, I think this movie has a very accurate portrayal of what it means to have an individual with ASD, especially to live with one, as I myself also live with an individual with autism as well. I really like how the film's um, impact on understanding ASD was because a lot of times people really didn't think these individuals were much at all, but in reality, a lot of these individuals with ASD are very capable and very amazing in their own right. And that is the end of my presentation.